Hello everyone and welcome to my tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to do a how to select the best linear regression model using the holdout method. And as you can see here on the screen, um, I'm using R Studio, which is a very user-friendly interface. And the first thing you want to do is load your data into um, the R Studio, and the command to do that is you just uh, name a variable here. I said data one. I select read CS read dot CSV, and then file dot choose with the parentheses. If I run this line here, I'm able to select um, the data set. Once I have the data set, I want to make sure I don't have any missing values. So I'm just going to delete the missing values by using this command. And I'm saving the new data without the missing values in life expectancy, because that is what we are going to predict. Um, the command is na.omit, and then you pass it the data um, or the variable that you saved your data in. When I run this, you will see that the number of observations have drastically decreased, um, but that's all right. It's still enough variables for us to work with. Next thing you want to do is attach your variables. So you will see it is going to throw me an error or error. It will say that these objects are masked because I have tried this example before and I already have attached all these variables. You can just disregard it. And the next line you want to check is the column names of this data set. And you will see it has a lot of different variables. And the response variable, the one that we are interested in, is the life expectancy. Uh, you can also check and you should check the data type. Um, the data type could be either number, integer, or character. If you have a character, you need to transform this into a dummy variable. And it's very easy to do. You just select this one because we have here a variable that is a character and has a strings instead of numbers or integers. So you just want to use this line here I'm going to save this variable in the exact same name so I'm not getting confused. And I say status equal as factor. So we're going to basically just um, have to pass it the variable name. And once I do that, it will run it. And then if I want to see how my strings were labeled, you just type contrasts status. This will show you that the developing countries and the developed countries are labeled as 0 and 1. The next thing you want to do is use a holdout method to split your data set into training and testing. And what we need to do is we need to set the seed. Um, this one is a very common uh, command that you have to do. Um, the reason is that it, it always draws a random sample from your data set when you split your data set into 80-20% or so. So you need to make sure that this number is the same so that it's drawing the same exact sample every time you run this. Um, so I'm going to just say seed 1. You could pass it really any number, seed 2, seed 3, anything would work. And you run it. And the next thing is we will create, um, we will have to say how do we want to split our data set into training and testing. I say I want 80% training and 20% testing. And to do that we say the training data set should be consisting of 
80% and that's why we have to multiply the data set by 0 0.8 to get 80% of it and you just have to say sample then the data set the number of rows from the data set and and then again number of rows of the data set times 0 0.8 and as you can see here, this one, if I run this, you will see that <clears throat> my training data set here, you can see that it has 1,319 observations now. That's 80% of this number here. Um, now we, we basically want to make sure we have a data a training set created. I call it training set, so it's easy to recognize. Um, and we use now, this is the name of the data set, and then we use the train, um, the training variable in here as the rows. So this is basically the row number. And then here would be the column numbers. So in, in this case, we want to use all of the columns, so you don't have to specify it, you can just leave it. But you have to make that comma here, it's uh, crucial to have. And we also have to create a testing set, and the testing set is the other 20%, which means we have to subtract the training data set from the whole data set here. So we would say life expect, and then minus the training data set which is the 80 percent and again we want all columns so you don't have to put anything after the comma the test response so the third variable we need is a variable called test or basically the response variable of the testing data set um, in our case the, the variable is called life expectancy as you can see here under the names this is actually the, the column name and the Y variable. So it's the response. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna name it test response. So I know this is the response variable to my testing data set. And in this case, you have to use the column name here. You cannot use the data set name. You have to use the Y variable. So if this would be Y, you just put a Y. And we want all rows that are not from the training data set. So which means we want to subtract the training data set again. Okay, so I'm going to run these commands. And this, okay. As you can see now, if we want to check the dimension, meaning the row and the column numbers, we can run this and it will give us how many rows and how many columns this training set has. We can also run the testing set and that one has 330 um, rows and 20 columns and that's the 80-20 split. So. This would be 80% and this would be 20%. And then the test response should have, you can guess it right, it would have um, 330 rows and only one column. As you can see here, it says test response 330. Okay, now we basically can start developing some models. And if you have experience with um, linear regression in R, you know that the way to develop a linear model is to use this command LM and then basically pass it the formula. And the life expectancy is our response variable. And that is equal to the dots should um, specify that we want to use all the variables um, that are in this data set. So I don't have to write all of them. I just put a dot and then I make a comma and I pass the data set, the name of that data set. 
since I want to only train the model on the data set, I'm going to only use the training set as the data input. And once I run this, I can check out the summary. And the summary basically returns now something called p-values that I'm very interested in because it shows how significant the variable is to the response variable. And three stars means that it is very significant on a significant level of 0 0.001. And you can see here the different codings. And based on that, I can say I only want to use the variables that are very significant and have all three stars. Um, so for my second model, I would say I want to try um, only these variables that have three stars and two stars. So you would say you just would use, for example, status. Don't get confused, it says status developing, but that just means if the status is equal to developing, it's significant. So you would just have to say status in this case because our variable initially is called status, as you can see, where is it? Here, so it's just called status. Okay, so now we add on the other variables that we are interested in. Um, we have here, if we go back down, adult mortality, infant deaths, alcohol, BMI, etc. And again, we use the training set as our data um, to train our model on. So if I run this line, I can check again the summary. And now if I check here, the variables are mostly also very significant. Now, if I want to say I want another model using now only the variables that are significant on a level of 0 0.001, I can do a third model, which I did. And I use only the ones that have three stars. So I'm going to run this one. And I check the summary. And now you see that all of these variables that we passed into our model um, are very significant. And you can also check the R squared. The R squared, the higher the better, but be sure to know that um, the R squared would differ uh, or is influenced by the number of variables. And in the first model, we had more variables, so it would be automatically a higher R squared. So you'd have to check the adjusted R squared to compare the three models if they have a different number of input variables. Okay, now after that, I can make predictions and basically find the mean squared error. And the smaller that mean squared error is, the better the model. And then based on that, you can select the model you want to choose. So the way to predict the model uh, sorry, the response is, I'm going to call this M1 predict and I pass it predict and then I, I need to put in the parentheses two, um, two variables. The first one is the model name. I called it M1 up here. So I would say M1 and we want to use this model on our testing set and save it in M1 predict. Okay, after we have the prediction, so if you check now the one M1 predict, it returns the values that were predicted for the response variable for the life expectancy. So for example, um, it predicted 63 dot 63 so that's the years the life expectancy in years and now we want to check the re we want to compare the predicted value with the real value in that data set so i'm gonna create a new variable called mse1 
and that um, basically calculates the mean the mean because you want to check um, the average error of all the predictions not just of one not just a yeah you just want to have the average value if that makes sense so in order to find the difference between the predicted value and the real value i want to subtract the predicted value from the real value and then square it you could even change the order of this here you could say m1 predict minus test response because you square it um, which means it will come out to the same but just leave it as it is test response oops is test response test response is basically the variable that we created before up here that contains only the responses um, of our testing data set and the m1 predict we just calculated and then we have to square it and now we can check the error and it's 12.89 that's our first model now let's do the exact same thing on our second model we say m2 predict and here we have to say m2 because that's what we are looking at our second model um, and again testing set is the same so we're gonna run this and then the next thing we want to do is run this here again make sure that you say here test response minus m2 predict and run and now we can check the mse2 and we see that it's a little bit higher which is which means that our model number one is better so far now let's check our last model m3 predict we use the third model here and the testing set stays the same we also have to calculate the MSE for our third model oh I didn't run this okay okay so now we can check what the error is here it's 12.95 so again you can see that based on the outcome our model number one which had all of the variables is the best um, model to use to make um, a more accurate prediction i hope you like this video i'm going to continue making some other videos using linear regression um, but next my next video will have an example of a cross validation with k folds so if you're interested, um, please tune in and yeah, and follow my account. Thank you.